Good morning. It's day two of our Bible studies for grown-ups. <laughs> I'm glad you've joined me. Piece of paper, cup of coffee. We're going to look at Mark 4 today. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather together to look at brief snips, snippets of your word in the Bible, but mostly for prayer and reflection. We ask you to be with us. We ask you to lead us where you wish us to go. And good Lord, please, please give us the patience and the endurance to stay in and stay away from people until this COVID-19 has worked its way through our systems. All these things we pray in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. This is Mark 4, verses 17 to 22. But they have no root and endure only for a while. Then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. He said to them, a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. The word of our Lord. Let's talk about this. As you know, the Bible has four Gospels, the books that tell the story of Jesus' life, and those are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This story today tells us the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Jesus starts with two things. One, he asks people to repent. In other words, turn around, because the kingdom of heaven is getting very close. And number two, he starts calling the disciples Peter, Andrew, James, John. They all leave their lives behind, their boats, their jobs, their families, and go with Jesus immediately. We have only so much time, so much energy, and so much focus in our lives. If we want to follow Jesus, we have to create some space and time. And you've started. If you're watching this, you've started to carve out that time. You're connected with the church. You're praying right now. Now that's a big, big deal. But it might only be the beginning of a richer life with God. Close your eyes. Let Jesus know that you want to follow him. Does he want you to leave anything behind? An opinion? A sin? A habit? Something you want? Money? Being a couch potato? A relationship? Some old moldy business? bitterness? Ask Jesus if there is anything that you're using to keep him at a safe distance. If there is, ask him to remove it. Now hold your hands in front of you, palms up, little fingers touching. Imagine the idea or habit or activity or grudge or whatever it is you need to give up 
rests in your hand. Now with a prayer and great love in your heart, even if it's a little scary, hand it over to God. Let him take that burden away. Let us pray. Oh Lord, here's what I think you'd like me to leave behind to follow you. I'm handing it to you now. Help me not to pick it up again. Help me see you and myself with better focus. Please, let me begin to understand how much you love me. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me on day two. Feel free to send me any kind of prayer requests you wish, and we'll get them handled every day as we meet. God love you. See you tomorrow with your Bibles. Bye.